Berkatei Yahweh, Berkatei Yahweh Shai, Kol Haloyim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barachah Kodash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world can only call Jesus Christ. Barachah Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, only way we can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and the sincerity always in charity. So, Brother Mathathi from the Great Millstone Camp, the branch on Des Moines. And um, I'm just start here in the book of Sirach, the 16th chapter, the 18th verse. It says, Behold the heaven and the heaven of heavens, the deep and the earth and all that therein is, shall be moved when he shall visit. The mountains also and foundations of the earth be shaken with trembling when the Lord looketh upon them. No heart can think upon these things worthily, and who is able to conceive his ways, man? You know? So this going into what? When the Lord returns, how he's going to shake everything. This is the book of Isaiah. The second chapter. <clears throat> and let's start at the 17th verse. And the loftiness of man, meaning the pride of man, shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah alone shall be exalted in that day. And the idols he shall utterly abolish, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the caves of the earth, for fear of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, and for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth, which this is a future prophecy, because we can read that here in the book of Revelation. Is that the 14th chapter? Let me see. Let's see if they got the precept there. <clears throat> In the book of Revelation. Yes, sir. Uh, it's Revelation 6. And let's start at 13. Well, let's start at 12, right? Because it's going to go into uh, uh, how the Lord is going to shake the earth. This Revelation 6 and 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and shake terribly the earth, right? And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Which Isaiah seen that in the book of Isaiah, the 34th chapter, as you can see here. And all the hosts of heaven, verse 4, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the heaven shall be rolled together as a scroll, that's a mushroom cloud. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falling off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. And these stars that Isaiah seen, that uh, John the Revelator seen within their visions, right, represents nuclear missiles. This is the book of Revelation 8 and 11. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood, meaning uh, radiation, right? They became poison. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter, right? And that's the radiation, man. That's why Yahweh Shah said, uh, uh, the stars shall fall from heaven, right? Which is talking about these nuclear missiles. Verse 14, back in Revelation 6, verse 14 now. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. That's the mushroom cloud. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The Lord is shaking the earth through the destruction he's going to bring through those nuclear missiles. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens in the rocks <clears throat> In the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath has come and who shall be able to stand. <laughs> you see that? So let's go back to Isaiah, the second chapter. Let's read the 19th verse again. Now we know why they're going to go into the caves of the rocks and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth for fear of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah. And for the glory of his majesty, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth in that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship 
to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks. This is your mountain retreats, right? For fear of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of. Right? So once again, now we know why they're going to run into these uh, uh, cave retreats, right? These dumbs, deep underground military bases. They got underwater retreats that they're going to run into. And now we know why. Because the Lord is going to bring that destruction. This is the book of Isaiah 24. In 17, it says, fear in the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. That's going back to the Isaiah 34. It says that his sword shall be bathed in heaven. So that's the nuclear missiles leaving the atmosphere and coming back down. You see? And that's what he means by the windows on high shall be open. That's the stars, right? Allegory for the, for the missiles coming down out of the sky. Verse 19. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. And shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And that's specifically talking about America. America is going to be destroyed and not rise again. But different parts of the earth, right, it's going to be built up again. Example is our land. Our land is going to get hit with a nuke. But after a certain amount of time, we're going to go back into that land, and the heathen is going to build it up for us, man. <laughs> you see? Verse 21, it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh Basham Yahweh shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Exactly. You know, so when the elect come down out of the chariots, like John seen in the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on the chapter. But he said he's seen uh, uh, the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. That's him seeing the chariot come down and those that were delivered come out of the chariot, man. And they're going to go according to um, Habakkuk. Is it Habakkuk? And they're going to go according to Habakkuk. Or is it Haggai? Is it Haggai? I believe it is Habakkuk. Let me just search it up. I believe it is Habakkuk. Amos, I'm mad as hell. <coughs> and uh, the elect are going to go and gather these heathen out of the places that they hid. It's Amos 9 and 2. Though they dig into hell, right? They digging down into the ground to escape the destruction. Then shall my hand take them. The Lord is going to have his elect come snatch their ass right out of those dumps. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. You got uh, your space retreats that these 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 devils go on, man. I'm thinking of, uh, what is that, Brunson, the billionaire Brunson guy trying to uh, have shuttle ships, you know, uh, go out to uh, space. Right? Says you're going to be brought down from there. Verse three, and though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, this is the top of a mountain. These are the rocks and the hills that they hide in. I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. Man. So there is no escaping. There is no escaping. You see? So once the Lord brings this destruction, that's it. So the Lord is coming to shake this place, man. Let's get um, Hebrews, because Hebrews is quoting <clears throat> the Haggai. This is Hebrews, matter of fact, let's get the Haggai first. 
It's how I got two. And six, for thus saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with glory, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Lord of hosts. Now, Paul spoke about this, right? This is the book of Hebrews. I'm going to start at 12 and I'm going to start at 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not, I'm sorry, for if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. <clears throat> right? And it's going back into when uh, the Lord came down and he was delivering the commandments. You know? If they didn't escape, who, were, who who didn't listen to those commandments that was given, shit, how much more is you not going to escape from hearing what's being said this time around? Verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken, like this current rulership. Lord is going to shake these, these heathen out of their positions, man. That's why I said she shall shake heaven. Heaven is a rulership first. You know, well, not first, but, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. You know, rule, uh, heaven is also a uh, rulership. It's not only just the heavens when you look up into the sky, but it's also a, a hierarchy or a rulership. You know, so like, I shouldn't have said first. And, and this word yet once more signified the removing of those things that are shaken as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Like what? Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve the Most High acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our power is a consuming fire, man. And that's what the Lord is going to bring upon this place, man. Is that fire. From those nuclear missiles, and that's how he's going to shake the earth. And Lord will, we be we be found worthy to escape the things to come upon this earth and be able to stand before our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, as it's written in the book of Luke, the 21st chapter. You know. <clears throat> so I just wanted to do a quick lesson on that. You know, I was meditating on, you know, the the, the great earthquake. Matter of fact, let's get that in Revelation 11. This Revelation 11. And 12, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. This is deliverance of the elect when the destruction comes. Verse 13, in the same hour was there a great earthquake. You see, same thing we read about in the sixth, uh, uh, in the sixth chapter. And the tenth part of the city fell, meaning America. America is broke up into 10 FEMA zones. So this whole country is going to be annihilated. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000, which seven is a completion. So it's a complete number that's going to die here in America. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the power of heaven, man. So that's the great earthquake. That's what it means when the Lord says he shall return and shake terribly the earth. You know, and with that shaking of the earth, What's going to be brought forth, man? This is the book of Second Edris. 16, I'll start at 1. It says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Bewail your children and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood or may anyone quench the fire and stubble when it when it hath begun to burn. May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. The mighty Lord sends the plagues and who is he that can drive them away? A fire shall go forth from his wrath and who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightnings and who shall not fear and he shall thunder and who shall not be afraid. The Lord shall threaten and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence. The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof. 
the sea ariseth up with waves from the deep. <laughs> you see? With waves from the deep. So when the whole earth shakes, what happens? Tsunamis, tidal waves, right? And the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand that beneath the bow, nuclear missiles, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world, man. And once again, that's those nuclear missiles, right? And Habakkuk seen the same thing. When you read Habakkuk, the third chapter, this is Habakkuk 3. And 7, I saw the tents of Kushan in affliction and the curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Was Yahweh Basham Yahweh displeased against the rivers? Was thy anger against the rivers? Was thy wrath against the sea? That thou diddest ride upon thy horses and thy chariots of salvation. So the, so the chariots is going to be bringing fire as well, man. Fire to read up. It speaks about how he had horns coming out of his hands. That's those laser beams. Ezra seen the same thing in 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter. This verse 9. Thy bow, right? Strong is his right hand that beneath the bow. Thy bow was made quite naked according to the oaths of the tribes, even thy word, Salah. Thou didst cleave the earth with rivers. The mountains saw thee, and they trembled. The overflowing of the water passed by. The deep uttered his voice and lifted up his hands on high, man. That's those tidal waves, right? Because once again, the Lord is going to terribly shake this earth, as we just read in Isaiah, the second chapter. The sun and the moon stood still in their habitation. At the light of thy arrows they went, and at the shining of thy glittering spear, those nuclear missiles, right? And some of how it blocked out the sun you know, uh, uh, through the debris, through the mushroom cloud, right? What it says, uh... This is the book of Ezekiel 32 and 7. And when I shall put thee out, right, which is going into Egypt, which is what? Modern day America. And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with the cloud and the moon shall not give her light. That's the mushroom cloud, man. That's all the smoke that's going to rise to the, uh, to the sky from the destruction. All the bright lights of heaven will I make dark over thee and set darkness upon thy land, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. I will vex the hearts of many people when I shall bring thy destruction among the nations into the countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many people amazed at thee, and their king shall be horribly afraid for thee when I shall brandish my sword before them. You go into that word brandish, is I wat, which means fly. <laughs> flying swords man missiles you see and they shall tremble at every moment every man for his own life in the day of thy fall because they gonna be scared nuclear missiles might hit them they gonna be scared because the whole earth gonna be shaking to and fro they ain't gonna know what the hell is going on man you see so to what you how about some y'all shy you know for allowing us to you know, hey, like it says in Hebrews, man, I'll end it here. If the spirit don't give me anything else. This is Hebrews 11 and 7. By faith, Noah being warned of the most high of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. So Noah was warned of the first death. And and. The Lord allowed him to, to build that ark and to save him and his household, man. Through his faith, through his belief. And guess what's happening this time around? The Lord is allowing us to know of the second death he's about to bring upon his place. And he's also allowing us time to build that spiritual ark in order to deliver ourselves and our households as well. You know, so Lord, well, I hope this was out of fine. The Wadi Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Baruch HaKadosh, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Shalom.